Oh, and to clarify, it looks like if you just kind of like cut off the face of a CPR dummy and put it on your face, that's what it looks like. That's a really it's good... It's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. I really, really like that description. It's really good. And actually, the reason it's good is because it's accurate. Hello and welcome to The Bad, The Bad, and The Worst, the show taking you through the world's most terrible mistakes in design. For our episode today, we're going to be looking at some of the worst as-seen-on-TV products ever made. I'm Jesse, and I'm joined by our two co-hosts. Go ahead and say hi, guys. Hey, how you doing? It's Bruce. Hey, it's me, Daniel. Alright, guys, and for today's topic, we're going to be talking about as-seen-on-TV products. I think you guys already know what this is, but just in case you don't, when you're watching television, especially, I think, on late night, a lot of the time you'll get infomercials, really sketchy looking products with like unbelievable claims. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. It'll be a good time. So you guys, can you go ahead and run me through what you picked for today? So real sketchy product indeed. I got the Rejuvenic face mask. Well, if you can get the idea of what doing eight setups a second would do for your stomach, you have an idea of what Rejuvenic would do for your face. Essentially, if masked, you exercise your face to remove them wrinkles. And how does it exercise your face? Uh, by shocking it with electricity. Of course, of course. And Bruce, what did you pick? Right, so from the salesman that sold us the Snuggie, it's the Slap Chop. Hi, it's Fitz with Slap Chop. You're going to be in a great mood all day because you're going to be slapping your troubles away with the Slap Chop. Almost like a mini food processor, except it's hand-powered. A hand-powered food processor? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's got three blades on the bottom. You put food right under it, and then you just you slap it until it's <laughs> chopped. Oh, okay. Real, uh, re right in the title. Sounds like it would definitely work, and I chose uh, my pillow. You're that guy. The my pillow guy. That's right, and I'm here to help you get the best sleep of your lives. Which, to the best of my knowledge, is just a pillow. I guess it doesn't ever go flat, supposedly. But I'm... yeah, it's your pillow. I love pillows. Uh, pillows are pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, mm -hmm. here, folks. The reason I wanted to talk about my pillow is specifically because of some of their advertising, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, Daniel, can you go ahead and tell me about that uh, face mask that electrifies your face to get rid of wrinkles? Uh, yeah, so it sounds like what it is. It's a mask that you put on that looks Jason-esque. You put it onto your face, and it has little nodes, electrical nodes that you can actually see. And it's kind of scary, but it shocks your face at specific points for about three to four minutes, and you do it a few times a week. And then, apparently, you get no wrinkles. During a facial toning session, the system delivers a mild impulse generated by a tiny 9-volt battery from the control unit. Apparently. Apparently. That's a huge claim. Could you tell the viewers at home, I think you really need to explain what it looks like as well. <laughs> Describing the mask, it'll really add a lot to the experience of how terrifying this product really is. Yeah, so it's essentially a hockey mask. The classic old Jason or killer hockey mask, but without the holes. And it's like this tan face and all you can see is like the eyes poking out and that's really it. Now inside the actual face mask, you see electrical nodes popping out in order for you to actually put in your face. There's like little yellow things coming out and you put that to your face. Of it, course, of course. There's like wires hanging out of it and stuff. Just in case anybody does need to hear this, a dermatologist do not recommend electrocuting your face to get rid of wrinkles. That actually does not work. It's like doing sit-ups for your face, both electricity, except it doesn't do work. Yeah, that's how physiology works, I'm certain. <laughs> yeah, imagine like if you can just like exercise parts of your body by shocking them, like <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> the new style. exercise craze, chalk sit-ups. <laughs> oh, and to clarify, it looks like if you just kind of like cut off the face of a CPR dummy and put it on your face, that's what it looks like. That's a really it's good... It's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. I really, really like that description. It's really good. And actually... The reason it's good is because it's accurate. Uh, any other reasons why you think this is the uh, worst as seen on TV product ever made, Daniel? I believe there's a potential lawsuit against them actually not being able to work. And it just seems kind of like a fraud, like get rid of wrinkles with just shocking your face. It kind of sounds bogus in the first place, but the fact is that it got a nice number of sales and it was still able to be a well-functioning product. Yeah, and I think all of these, uh, I think this is a, a problem with the industry in general at least like this type of industry in general, that it feels kind of manipulative, it takes advantage of people being insecure that they're getting older. Uh, and next, I'm going to be moving on to talk about my choice for the week, my pillow. To my knowledge, it's essentially just a pillow that never goes flat. And I've never really been a picky sleeper. I don't know about you guys. I, I, don't, I don't care. I, I, if I can fall asleep, it's good enough, and I can fall asleep in pretty much anywhere. So I've never really wanted a product like this. And I can't really say if it will make your sleep better or not. 
But you know, what's really interesting about this product is the things that uh, MyPillow, the company, says about MyPillow. My friend and sleep expert, Michael J. Lindell, is the founder and inventor of a revolutionary new sleep aid. I want to quickly talk about the difference between uh, false advertising and puffery. A tagline on MyPillow's website is the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own, and that's a subjective quality, so it's completely okay and counts as puffery. Actually, the thing that MyPillow has gotten sued for multiple times is essentially just claiming that their pillow has a whole bunch of health benefits when it doesn't, allegedly, because we don't want to get sued on this show. <laughs> but essentially what happened was in 2016, a consumer advocacy group called Truth in Advertising filed a lawsuit against them alleging that the commercials they aired said they provided health benefits when there is no conclusive proof that the pillow actually provided these benefits. The commercials were subsequently removed from the air, but Truth in Advertising claimed that MyPillow kept putting these claims on their social media accounts. About a year later, the lawsuit was settled for a million dollars and my pillow did not admit any wrongdoing which is why which is why we're not saying anything conclusive yeah well, so to be fair they paid a million dollars to not admit any wrongdoing so really they didn't do anything wrong that's true that's true so do you think these claims can be made for any pillow at all and they just expanded it to their own pillow i don't know i don't think you should the entire point of the lawsuit was just that you can't really make health benefited claims without any evidence didn't your mask also do that about the wrinkles? Mm, you definitely. Except my pillow takes it a step further. Don't worry. So Ooh. yeah. So don't worry. We said that they said, hey, you can't make any. You can't make these claims without evidence. So like any reasonable person or company, my pillow came back with evidence. Ooh. Except they paid for the evidence. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Like any company sponsored research, Ooh. it was obviously amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so. This is actually just of last year, of 2019. So they came back and they started making these claims again. And this time they were like, nope, no, don't worry. It's backed up by our double-blind placebo trial. Truth in Advertising comes back again and says, your study is neither of those things. And also, you didn't really disclose the fact that you paid for said study. You can't keep making these claims. And then this lawsuit was actually just settled very recently in October of last year. My fellow only paid $100,000 this time without admitting any wrongdoing. Hmm. Yeah. Paying your researchers seems like a little bit of a conflict of interest when you're bringing it to court. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I think that's probably why they ended up paying a lot of money, even though, you know, of course, they didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what kind of claims did they actually make? Essentially that they could cure or like fix certain like sleeping issues that were common. Oh, yikes. So increase oxygen levels or decrease snoring or cure sleep apnea, stuff like that. A pillow, by the way. Yes, a pillow. I feel like a thousand years from now, civilization's going to look back on our time and be like, wow, these guys had no clue what they were talking about when it comes to sleep and psychology. True. Or they'll just look back a thousand years from now and say, wow, they don't know what they were talking about about anything. True. <laughs> but I have a special little theory for you guys today. In fact, you know, I, actually, I don't have a theory because we don't want to get sued. I'm just going to point out a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look up a review for MyPillow, uh, you'll happen upon the first Google result is uh, made by a, a specific author called Brenda Bostwick or something like that, which, you know, pretty normal. Unless you Google that name and found out that you cannot actually find any of her social media accounts or any other articles that she's written for that matter. And also the website that uh, this article is listed on conveniently near the top of Google searches, which is pretty difficult to do, only has four articles related to pillows on the entire website. <laughs> and... All of those are pillow reviews. All of them are positive, and <laughs> half of them are positive reviews for my pillow specifically. And finally, I'm not. I'm not gonna say that these are all telltale signs that someone bought a review because this said said review is making all of the same claims that they got sued for. I'm. I'm just saying. I'm, I'd just like to point all of those things out. Imagine like having in your review that you like fix your sleep apnea, insomnia, neck pain, oxygen <laughs> breathing, like in one line. <laughs> oh, oh, you want me to read? I'll even oh, read the. Yeah, I'll even good. read the description of the article. Have trouble sleeping? Want something comfortable for a better support? My pillow has helped many people with insomnia, snoring, neck oh pain, restless oh, no. oh, <laughs> and migraine. It is a brand of bed pillow. Isn't that how you guys would lead a review that you're writing? Oh yeah, right. Amazon reviews yeah. all the time. That's how I start them with. I start them like an ad bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you're cons 
Oh, not your consumer. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not your consumer. Your reader. Your reader really understands mm -hmm. how good of a product you have when you're reviewing it. And I mean, even if we theoretically did make these claims, couldn't we just, I don't know, pay $1,000 to clear ourselves of wrongdoing, much like certain pillow companies? Uh, we not any specific one, just, you know, certain ones. We don't have $100,000. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> <laughs> just wait till this podcast takes mm. off, my friend. You wish. I wish. <laughs> yeah, and that's all I got to say about my pillow. And I'm definitely not saying that they're still buying reviews and making all of those reviews make the same claims that they got sued for initially. I would never say that. And someone's like they're copy and paste it from their websites. Almost. No, 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 no. That, that, that's just a coincidence. Yeah, just coincidence. a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're correct. Just hypothetically, you know? Can we talk about how you can trademark a name like My Pillow though? Yes. Completely irrelevant, but like, what? <laughs> I love what? it. What? Oh, and they got actually they got in a legal battle with another company. They actually won this lawsuit though. Ooh, Ag mm. Yeah, against a company called I Love My Pillow. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that company was allegedly named I Love My Pillow because the owner's daughter said I Love My Pillow, and he said, "What a great company name." I I'm not that, kidding. That is fantastic. That's amazing. It's almost like if the Lens Crafters company was actually called I Love Lens Crafters and someone else just took the Lens Crafters name. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, the whole I Love My Pillow thing came up three years after, which is why they won the lawsuit. Hmm. And I think that's something to do with like buying Google search ads directly related to like my and pillow. I don't know the specifics of that lawsuit for sure. You should make a company called Your Pillow. <laughs> That'd be nice. Our Pillow. The Our Pillow. <laughs> The pillow. <laughs> really, the, the opportunities are endless here. Before we get sued, Bruce, why don't you tell us about our next product? All right, let's talk about the Slap Chop. Um, if you've never seen the Slap Chop before, well, <laughs> it's really simple. You have three blades attached to a spring plunger, and it's about one or two inches in diameter, so about the size of a coffee grinder, and you, you know, your two-inch vegetables under it, and you slap it to cut it. That simple. It's that simple. You know, it looks so small. I don't, I don't know how they're going to stop a whole entire lettuce inside this little tiny bop. Oh, oh no, it's easy. You cut the lettuce first, Yeah, it's dude. really simple. You <laughs> cut your celery into one-inch sticks, and then you put it under your slap chop to slap it, dude. It's really simple. It's really simple. All you have to do to cut your vegetables is just slice them up first. Yeah, and then, and then you slap it, which is why I wanted to ask you guys, do you own a knife? I do. You do own a knife. Wow, that's amazing. How about you, Daniel? More than one, believe it or not. More than one? What? So you okay, don't need a, a slap chop. We, <laughs> what? We what? got a high roller over here with more than oh one knife. Oh, my gosh. Are you telling me that you're not going to have to clean your every single, like, we'll go through a dishwasher every single time you make any meal? You know, I just use the same knife, honestly. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, fancy pants over here with a knife instead of a slap chop. Okay, okay. Are you telling me every time you cut something, it doesn't immediately splatter over a plastic <laughs> case? Can you cut things that are longer than an inch? Is that something you can do? Hmm, I must be spoiled. Dang. <laughs> yeah, no, but seriously, like in this age of kitchen gadgets, you know, we have like pepper preppers, pickle pickers, banana slicers, corn kennelers, butter spreaders. It's just, it's another unfortunate casualty, much like all of those. It's a waste of counter space, but... I admit, the salesman was real charismatic, you know? Oh, yeah, he was great. Yeah. Uh, uh, my favorite part was just how he insulted the viewer. <laughs> yeah, but he did it so smoothly. Like, he could sell me a carrot on a stick, and I would still buy it. Quick editor's note here, just to say that we do not actually endorse the salesman of the Slap Chop, because he got in some legal trouble surrounding assault and battery a little while ago. Please keep that in mind, that we do not endorse this man, and enjoy the rest of the episode for the bad, the bad, and the worst. Oh, Which absolutely. is why I understand why everyone is still buying the Slap Chop. Like, I, I, I know none of us have bought the product, but, like, I wish we could. Because I'm so curious to see, I, I think it'd be funny to see how well it didn't work, you know? Because mm -hmm. you know as soon as you put, like, any kind of, like, actual vegetable underneath it, and you slap it, it's just gonna, like, make a small dent. Or ruin your onion or tomato or whatever. I think like tomato is like the worst example. You just like you imagine just like it. squishing a tomato Squish. inside this like grinder. Like just imagine the mess it will make and the lack of tomatoes that you will have. Yeah, you can't sharpen the blades. And it's a spring plunger. I don't know, man. It's questionable. I think you're just going to end up with like a smushed tomato. Yeah, it's literally a spring plunger attached to a knife that you just slap. Yeah, but you can slap it with one finger though. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, I don't want to get sued. But... I think you're understanding how much he tries to, like, insult you. Like, he's like, you know why you don't eat salads? You're lazy. But <laughs> we got Slap Chop to fix that problem for you. 
You love salad, you hate making it. You know you hate making salads, that's why you don't have any salad in your diet. Watch this, one slap, salad. Like he really like sells it out to be like, it's your problem, not slap shop. My slap shop. But your life will be so much better if you buy slap shop. Yeah. Or any of the products that we've listed today. Boring tuna, boring life, dude. That's why you gotta get a slap shop. A slap shop's great. It's very, it's a very simple product. You know, you might be thinking, oh, why is it, why is it the worst? Because it doesn't work. And it, it's like a decent price, isn't it? It's like 20 bucks. Yeah. 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 It's just silly, though. You know, you could get... A knife? A, oh, you could get a knife. You could get a food processor. You could use a your plunger. hand instead of a spring plunger. I don't know. <laughs> or if you want something to be cut into, like, really small pieces automatically, I think they have this thing called a blender. Oh. Mm. Look at Mr. Fancy Pants over here. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. I know all the <laughs> yeah. kitchen gadgets. Yeah. I'm up with the time. <laughs> That's going to be all three products for today. We're going to take a short break real quick, and we'll be right back on this episode of The Bad, The Bad, and The Worst. Hey, Bruce. I've been having some real trouble coming up with ideas for our next episode. Have you tried checking our Discord server or our Twitter and Instagram? No, I haven't. Well, right now, we have a Discord server ready for anyone to join, and our listeners can react to our episodes and give suggestions for future ones. It's the best way for us to talk to our listeners and our best way for our listeners to talk to us. Sounds like the person listening should join and tell us what their opinion on what the worst really is. We're going to talk about which one of these products is really the worst. And we're going to do that by asking our three consensus questions on this consensus conversation. All right, and our first question for today is going to be which one of these products is actually the worst. I'm going to go ahead and uh, ax my pillow out of this conversation. I mean, it's a pillow. Even if it doesn't have any special health benefits, it's still a pillow. Might be comfortable. I don't know. I'm not going to buy it, but it's a pillow. And yeah. I can imagine, like, the chop slice. What was it called again? You mean the slab chop? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine the slab chop definitely working, like, with at least, like, lettuce somehow. And if you just mash it really hard enough, you but, might get I some mean, product. It does have a niche use for, like, I don't know, like, nuts, you know? <laughs> to get a nice ice cream topping, you can sm slap your Oreos, you know? Like, yeah, I have to admit, you know, it has a, a few random usages. But don't they have nutcrackers for that, too? Shh. Okay, my bad. Sorry, 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 hey, sorry. They do not have Oreo crackers, though. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I, I do have a counterpoint to Daniel's thing about lettuce. What lettuce are you fitting under there? <laughs> like, we already you talked about One leaf earlier. of lettuce. Yeah, See, dude. you cut it into two by two uh, oh, okay. but, circles. But I don't own a knife. I own a slap chop instead. Yes, yeah, so how are you going to cut it into the circles in the... I got nothing. Yeah, I know you got nothing. I'm essentially saying I think Rejuvenic Face Mac is, is the only one that has... Legitimately zero product. At this point, it's just a scary mask. Yeah, well, it's good for your Hannibal Lecter cosplay, though. That's very true. You know, if you're really panicking and it's October 30th. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, do you know how scary it would be when someone takes off your mask and it shocks them? That'd be pretty creepy. Yeah, that'd be kind of... <laughs> that being said, I'll, I'll agree with Daniel on this one. Yeah, I would, I would use a pillow. I would attempt to use a slap chop for a few things. I would not put that mask on. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and it's like, it does not kind of scare you to use a slap chop you'll just be like haha it broke or haha it didn't really mm -hmm. cut anything you're not going to be like this mask is going to stick to my face for the rest of my life and it is going to kill me somehow and electrocute you yeah mm. it's uh, like a symbiote yeah it really dude i'm pretty sure it just takes control of its mm -hmm. host <laughs> and anyway we're gonna have to move on to our next question which is which one of these has the worst commercials it's clearly not the slap chop. It's not the slap chop. It is chop. absolutely not the slap chop. I think my pillow definitely takes the cake for this one. No, he's pretty he's pretty charismatic too, the guy who's selling it. He's a really enthusiastic dude. Well yeah, but he lies out of his teeth every two words. Oh apparently. that's <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good true. point. That's true. That's a good point. Even though he is a very charismatic guy. Allegedly. They made false claims during the advertisement. You know so that I, has to count for something. You know, guys, I think I think I have a good solution to this question. I think we should just go with our gut on this one, and I think everybody's gut is saying my pillow for no specific reason. Hmm, kind of fishy. Go on. No, no, no. I'm just saying I, that's just my instinct is to vote my pillow for the worst advertising. What do you guys think? I can't say I've ever actually seen an ad for your face mask. Um, it's pretty jarring, actually. Maybe mine. Hmm. Because if you see mine, it's just like a doctor or whatever. Uh, we're going to pause the recording right here to go watch a commercial for Daniel's product. All right, and we're back. Now that we've taken a little bit of time to go over the commercials again, what did you guys think was the worst? Yeah, so the thing about 
your mask is that it's like any other infomercial that you've seen. Like, you've seen commercials just like it. It's, you know, not anything. There's nothing that particularly stands out. The commercial itself is pretty standard, I would say. It's just that the product is mildly terrifying. And by mildly, I mean extremely. Mm -hmm. It's a little unsettling. But, you know, they didn't make... Allegedly, they didn't make any direct lies to the... Yeah, they said it gets sort of wrinkles and exercises your face. It might do that. <laughs> it might do that. Mm-hmm. I'm still waiting for the day you can do sit-ups with electrocuting your muscles. By two out of three, with I think Daniel saying that uh, the face mask is the way to go, and Bruce and I saying that the alleged claims of false advertising from my pillow make that the choice for the worst commercial out of the three. Although I will briefly say that the acting was not a problem in any of these commercials. Very high production value, surprisingly. Nice. Yeah, infomercials are known for their terrible acting. Like, no, you open no, up no. a cabinet, the containers fall down on the top of the actor, and the actor's like, eh, what is this? Yeah, but it's hilarious. I love infomercials. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. It's great. And these were all great, too, honestly. Mm-hmm. Very entertaining. But moving on. You know, with the, with the holiday season coming up, either holiday, Hanukkah, Christmas, or whatever else you prefer to celebrate, there's going to be a lot of gifts being given out. And, you know, with a lot of gifts being given out, you have to wonder, if you were given one of these gifts, which one of these would be going back to the store? For me, I think it's definitely the face mask, okay? Not only, if a family member gives me a face mask and says, well, I mean, I'm a young person, which makes it even worse, right? But, like, if someone gives me a face mask and says, here, it can electrocute your wrinkles away. Not only is that sending a message that they think your face is wrinkly, <laughs> but also it's like terrifying that you just got that on Christmas. I think I'm going to get murdered by that person. You got a serial killer hockey mask for your Christmas Merry gift. Christmas. Woo. Yeah. Woo. And that's like a gift? Uh, I don't. I kind of doubt it, but I would definitely be returning that one instantly. Yeah, it's just a little too terrifying. Just a little too unsettling. I completely agree. It's so scary. It's, it's not that scary, but it's like, the fact that it legitimately exists and there's no, like, irony behind it is is what's creepy. Well, you could make, like, an apocalyptic movie about that where everyone's just wearing that mask and it would work. Oh, and everyone's mind-controlled by yeah, the yeah, electricity? Exactly. Oh. Everyone has smooth face wrinkles. Oh, <laughs> 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 Wrinkles no longer exist, but at what cost? What a tagline. <laughs> but at what cost, yeah. Don't worry, the bad, the bad, and the worst. We'll be producing an action post-apocalypse movie. <laughs> Should be done by tomorrow. Don't you guys think? Sounds good. Birdemic was shot in like a few few days. I think we could do it. Oh, we're so good. We're so good at that stuff. I think that's going to be it for this week. And by an evaluation out of two of the three questions, we have decided that the worst as seen on TV product of all time for being not only completely ineffective, but also for being terrifying and Quite possibly one of the worst Christmas gifts you could ever hope to receive. We have the Rejuvenic Electrical Facial Mask. Please never buy it. I I think you can actually still get it on Amazon, which is crazy. Please do not buy this thing on Amazon. (laughs) Whatever you do. (laughs) Or do. Just don't use it. Please don't hurt yourself. Either way, we'll see you on the next episode of The Bad, The Bad, and The Worst. Thank you so much for listening, and make sure to check out our Discord, our Twitter, and our Instagram, at BadWorstPod. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.